like to call the Joint Special School Building Committee to order. We're at Nashua High School North Lecture Hall. It's Thursday, January 25th, 2024. It's 7.02 p.m. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Dowd. Present. Alderman Wilshire. Alderman Timmons. Here. Alderman Sullivan. Here. Uh, Alderman Lopez. Ms. Raymond, Ms. Bishop, Ms. Giulio. Here. Ms. Daniels Williams. Here. And Ms. Brin. Here. I see that right? Yeah, Mrs. Here. Brin. Okay, we do have a quorum. And if the clerk would read the player and the Alderman Sullivan will lead us in the pledge. Almighty God, we have the high honor and serious duty to manage the educational affairs of our beloved city. Fill so God with a spirit of unity and understanding which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind, charity, justice and charity for all. That any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all our fellow citizens. So help us God. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, for God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Okay. <clears throat> if there are no objections, I'll waive the reading of the minutes of December 21st, 2023, and place them on file. Okay, first order of business, just so that we keep in proper form, I'll accept. Uh, nominations for chairman of this committee. <laughs> okay, any other nominations? <laughs> Seeing none. I'll move that nominations be closed. Motion on the floor is closed nominations. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, so now uh, motion to elect me as chair. Following two years, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. I would like to make a motion to uh, elect Jen Bishop as the vice chair of this committee. Any other nominations for vice chair? Okay. I have a motion to close nominations. All right. Motion on the floor is close nominations for vice chair. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The uh, motion on the floor now is like Jen Bishop as the vice chair. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. <clears throat> that out of the way. Shush. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when Oliver O'Brien was just made clerk of budget. And he was there, but <laughs> he also. Okay, I'd like people to introduce, since we have some new people, I want people to introduce themselves. All our new people are here, but uh, just so everybody knows who's who, can we start with Ken? Ken Lemarier, Harvey Construction, Project Manager. Brendan Orell, Harvey Construction, Assistant Project Manager. Kathy Misko, Harvey Construction, Senior Project Manager. Mario Andre, Superintendent of Schools. Sharon Giglio, Board of Education. Tawanda Daniels Williams, Board of Education. Kirsten Prin, Board of Education. Tom Lopez, Alderman for Ward 4. And I was going to say, just as a point of order, green means go on these, but I guess I can hear myself, so that works. Yeah, the mics here are a little different. Turn them off. You have to hold the button. Do I want to turn them off? But when you speak, it has to be green or booth will yell. Okay. <laughs> I've turned it on, booth. Okay, so I'm Rick Dowd. I'm Alderman, uh, more two and Nashua and Tara joint special. <laughs> I ain't not Mike. John <laughs> Sullivan, Ward Nine Alderman. Jamie Willett, uh, an architect with Harriman Associates, uh, project manager for many of these middle, many, many, many of these schools that we speak of tonight. Sean Smith, plan operation. Okay. Um. I'm going to wait the that uh, new presentation until 
we start the other things. But right now, um, like, see if we have any remarks for school administration. Yeah, just, just want to welcome the new members to the JSSPC. You, you're in for a ride. It's a good learning experience of um, just seeing the details of uh, all the great work that's going into our schools to, to, to support our a thriving learning community for our, our students. So I'm really thankful to this community, uh, this committee. I think you'll be happy that you're on it. So welcome. All right. And uh, John, anything right now? Just note that February's uh, joint special meeting is kind of a week early because of February vacation break. 22nd. Right. And Sean, we have to make sure all the new members are on the list for getting all the info distributed. This evening, uh, since we have three new members that haven't been with us before, put together a presentation with Sean and Ken to, to introduce what we do, why we do it, what we're doing. So, uh, can you make that full screen? All right, so this is the Joint Special School Building Committee, and and uh, next slide. And as I go through this, I'm going to call on Harvey and Harriman to answer questions. Like, so by state law, the Joint Special was created to uh, handle large school building projects, and it's comprised by ordinance of five members of the Board of Aldermen, five members of the BOE. Actually, state law says they have equal members for both boards. We used to have full board of aldermen, I mean, the full board of education and nine aldermen, and it was like possible to get four of them. <laughs> so we went to five and five quite a while ago. So we meet once a month to talk about the school construction projects, have presentations to the architect, structure manager, and school administration. Occasionally, we have other meetings as warranted. Due to circumstances, and that would be enough up advantage. So, Joint Special has a, a chairman, well, vice chair, thinking ahead, bishop. John Smith is plan operations and is a main cog project, oversees this project administration. So the way this works is uh, the Board of Education votes to engage in some type of new building project. And then major projects, usually over a million dollars, are sent by a vote of the BOE to the Joint Special. The joint Special takes a vote to take on the project and work with Sean to get an estimate from an architect from developed plants. Bids are requested, requests for coats are put out. Based on several factors, an estimated price for the project Determine initial project nation and get the paint <clears throat> And then the Board of Aldermen, usually the Joint Special Chair, puts forth legislation for the bond project. Once the bond's approved, the architect is hired and design is then completed. Based upon the completed design, which has, uh, has to have approval from the Joint Special School Building Committee, the construction manager is sought to sought to an RFP and a construction managers. Construction manager goes through a pricing exercise for the materials and subcontractors and comes up with a guaranteed maximum price. In most cases, this falls within the bond scope. It doesn't address its differences. Upon acceptance of the joint special of the GMP, approval will start work granted by signing a contract and the GMP. Changes to the GMP are only allowed through potential change orders, PCOs, which can add costs to the GMP or reduce costs. Occasionally, we get a PCO that takes costs out of them. PCOs must be approved by the Joint Special. Exception of the above, authority of the Joint Special Chairman has the authority to approve PCOs on an emergency basis up to $50,000, and Mr. Smith has up to $5,000 version conditions to keep the project on track by avoiding construction delays which drive increased costs. PCOs are followed by a prime contract change order, PCCOs, to formally modify the contract 
to reflect the scope change that we approved on a previous PCO or PCO. This also requires quite special approval, but just to secure, sure the PCO reflects the PCOs. And once we approve the PCOs, it's basically a paperwork exercise for PCC. It's kind of crazy to not approve the PCCO when we already approved it. Represent. Monthly uh, updates from the architect structure and team are presented at every one of the joint special meetings. And then the project is successfully completed. The joint special approves the project completion documentation. We'll have one of those tonight. Next. So with some of the current projects we're working on, the Franklin Street School at a bonded cost of five million, federal funds, ESSER funds, six million total, 11 million, that project uh, completed. We'll talk a little more about that later. Middle school project, 120 million, it was 118 million bond, two million from Bear, other sources, and no federal funds, so project that involved fairgrounds, Penichuk, MacArthur. We'll get more detail in a minute. The other project we're working on right now is Birchill and Mains Dunstool. The $16 million bond cost, $17 million <clears throat> funds for a $23 million total project. Complicated, but there's a new bond changing process we'll describe separately. Dr. Chris Winnusel, so security vestibules, it's a $2 million effort. Uh, after the architect did the design and we priced out the design that we have to do, it's uh, going to require at least a million and a half to do those. Things. Fifty-five Franklin Street. The decision made by the Board of Education to buy fifty-five Franklin Street for the preschool class, preschool classes, alternative high school. <clears throat> uh, the project was undertaken by Joint Special after the project had actually started. Got involved in it, and this project completed. This is what school looks like today. I have pictures of what it looked like initially, the main. Basically, engineering building. They did a great job. And you'll get more on this in a minute. So we'll get into details yet. They cover that under Harvey's. Next. Middle school project decision was made that Elm Street was determined that it's too expensive to modify. And even if we modified it, it did not meet any of the middle school criteria. So it was determined after a lot of study to do a middle school project, take care of fairground, <clears throat> and a truck, build a new, new school, all which house 850. So fairgrounds uh, basically was, was uh, undertaken and it was, uh, did some additions and renovations and a couple of things you might note that this was the first school we did all of the solar work on it. The whole roof is covered with solar. It runs the electricity for the school. Uh, if anybody had been in fairgrounds before we did the renovation, you would see it's a totally much more, much more light much more ability to do the middle school. So I think we have some additional. Next. These are before and after. These three things, this is the way it looked initially. This is the way it looks today. The difference in the floor, gym floor to <laughs> today's gym. And uh, this used to be full of cubbies. Now this is, a collabor this is a collaboration area where they have a large screen TV, interactive, interactive uh, whiteboards. They can put all three. They can put a whole sixth grade, seventh grade, or eighth grade. There's three of them, three different areas like that each one's for a grade and they take all the kids in that grade and one presentation next penichuk middle school renovations uh this was a situation where we modernized the school and added on and additions were these two wings the library music room and they'll get in for that Structure management project. 
McCarthy Middle School was found not to be, uh, the Elm Street was found not to be economically feasible to renovate. We determined the new build the new school that we had land set aside for a school in South Nashville. And the school was named after the longtime president of the Board of Aldermen, Brian McCarthy, who died while in office. He was a long time at the National School, served numerous years on the Joint Special and Committee on School Construction. This is the Brian McCarthy School today. It's even farther along than this. Notice this. This is really it's amazing. The cafeteria, there's a stage area here. Backside areas with kids steps. That's the view out of one of the windows of D Wing, C Wing. D Wing? And that would There's a collaboration area. There's a collaboration area for each one of the levels on each one of the wings for different classes. And all the athletic, all the athletic, they have a full athletic field, full track, full a rectangular field for soccer and softball field, a baseball field, basketball, basketball court. And it's a new access. Uh, yeah, Alderman Dow. So this photo was taken in March of 2022, and this was November of 2023. So it gives you an idea of the timeline. It is a major project, major under next. Virtual and Main Zensible used to have built at the same time, and, and they were open concept schools, and during the pandemic, determined large health risk. These were built to uh, feed into the high school at the time, which was open concept 20 some odd years ago or more. Open concept was taken out of the high school, but we got the kind of eight schools. Federal government said that's a good idea, so they allocated federal funds to the HIVAC for the Boulder. Past the $16 million fund classroom take available five access. Two schools are currently time phase construction. The completion of the first phase we'll hear on later. Final completion of the summer. Next. So these are some pictures that kind of be going into in more detail in a few minutes of this presentation. Tap for Dylan Main then. Dr. Chris, uh, New Searles vestibule projects, uh, basically very simply, those two, those two vestibule projects have been designed. Lines have been given to Harvey and pricing it out. Mount Pleasant to be addressed, Board of Education, if the Board of Education makes a decision to keep it or not. Architect is hired and completed all the designs, but Harvey's working on the uh, cost to I know that was fast, but are there any questions? Uh, the pictures that you saw, they're going to be described by Harvey in their presentation. So, if anybody has any questions, you can always email me or call me and fill you in more. Time, we will now go to. Um, we both forgot and we didn't update the presentation to say we got another $10 million for the middle school project. So it's, they have 120, it's 130 million. I just missed, I think it was Jamie's fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I, that's a long story. So, so now we'll go into the, uh, Architect and Structure Manager's Report. We'll start with the Architect's Report, Jamie from Harriman. Good evening, everyone. Jamie Willett with Harriman. Um, I have done presentations uh, up on the screen uh, early on or earlier when we were doing a lot of design work. 
most of the work now uh, for the for the schools is in construction, and so Harvey's been doing a lot of the um, showing of pictures of, of what's being constructed. So what you do have in front of you would be a memorandum that we put together is kind of summarizing um, our efforts in the construction phases of this project. So I'll, I'll go through that tonight. <clears throat> So the, for the Brian S. McCarthy Middle School, uh, we continue to review submittals uh, and questions that are coming from Harvey for the construction process. Um, we have been on site uh, just last week uh, reviewing, uh, doing a punch list for the B area of the building. And uh, for those of you not familiar with the lettering of the building areas, um, I'll describe it as the public side of the building. It's a, it's a really big section that has like the gym, uh, the cafeteria, the unified arts areas, um, the administration, the main entrance to the building, that's being called area A. And then there are three classroom wings that come off um, as uh, kind of like spokes. So it goes around clockwise, B uh, to the right, C down, uh, and, and D to the left. <clears throat> so when I refer to um, area B that we did the punch list for, that is one of the classroom wings. It's a three-story classroom wing. We previously had punched area C, which is a four-story um, classroom wing as well. That's on the south end of the school. So, so far, we've completed two punch list areas. Uh, and just punch list is, is going through and making sure that the construction work uh, conforms with the final completion of the project. And you can do that in little areas. Um, and then Harvey will come through and kind of pick up those things like maybe it's, it's paint nicks on the wall or, or things that need to be uh, touched up um, and so that that's uh, where we're at with area c and b uh, we're scheduled to visit area d the last of the classroom wings on february 1st we'll be doing our punch list over there um, and once that's completed all the classroom general classroom science classrooms will be punched area a will follow um, that's Probably likely to be sometime around June, um, excuse me, May, uh, April, May time frame. But we'll schedule that when Harvey's ready for us to uh, Furniture installation is still currently on track for early May for phase one work, which is those classroom wings I was referring to, and early June for phase two, which is the A, the, the, the quote unquote public side of the building. Um, Harriman right now is reviewing a few additional furniture pieces that are needed for um, notably some unified art spaces like the, the um, music area um, and the stage. Uh, there was a request for uh, a podium, so we're looking at we're looking at adding a few additional pieces of furniture um, to the to the project to to fulfill the needs of the entire school. Uh, additional design items that we're working on right now. Um, during the process, there's been a request from the kitchen director and the kitchen manager. Um, they actually had a tour several months ago and took a few adjustments that they could see made. Um, we are currently uh, in process to re review them or make those changes and review that with, with Harvey as well as the school district. Um, and so that's pretty close to getting to a point where the updates will be sent along. Over at Penichuk Middle School, um, the school is all, is all open. It's uh, it's being used. It's been open for a little bit now. Um, there is a project to add some dehumidification to the two new classroom wings. Um, we are we are undergoing right now some submittal review of that dehumidification portion of the project um, and coordinating that work with Harvey. Um, and so. Uh, Tonight, I think in your package, you should have received um, a proposal for, for our additional services, for additional construction administration for that dehumidification project from Harriman. Um, Alderman Dowd, Dowd has already uh, signed the proposal for that work, but Alderman Dowd, I would assume you'd like to have looked on that or... Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, the reason we, we had to sign it and get it going is the long lead time on the equipment. So we can get to start work in the, as soon as the, the snow disappears. Um, so um, that was a sign to keep the project moving. So I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the uh, contract for 
Harriman to do the architectural work for the Penichuk air conditioning. So moved. So moved by Mr. Giulio. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Yeah, Jamie. Thank you. Um, and on the back side of that memorandum, there's a uh, little summary for Birch Hill and Wayne Dunstall Elementary Schools. Uh, we continue to review submittals and questions that are coming in from Harvey and EI, who's doing uh, the mechanical electrical and plumbing work. Um, Harriman uh, is scheduling a punch list uh, for February 8th for a portion of the both of those schools that will be turned over for uh, I think after or at February break. Um, so we're going to get over there to review those pieces um, so that Harvey can, Harvey and, oh yeah, so Harvey can finish up their work for the turnover. And that's all. Any questions? Okay. Questions for the architect? None. Um, Thank you. Okay. Ken? Good evening, everybody. Ken Lamary with Harvey Construction. I'm the project manager for the McCarthy Middle School. Um, I also was the, the project manager for the Penichuk Middle School and the Fairgrounds Middle School that we showed you earlier. Uh, so part of our monthly uh, duties here, we kind of, as Jamie mentioned, we kind of run through what's going on more in the in the field and less on the, the front end type of thing. So I'll give an update on the McCarthy School. Uh, Brendan will give an update on the upcoming dehumidification project over at Penichuk and as well as Maine Dunstable and Birch Hill. And then um, Kathy does have a PCCO, which kind of closes things out um, for cost savings over at Franklin Street. So you get it for the, the new folks, you get a little bit of everything tonight from Harvey. Jump in. So starting at the McCarthy Middle School, um, I usually try to start at the, uh, the exterior of the school and go, go inward. So Jamie was kind of mentioning the Kind of the layout of the building so he was mentioning the classroom wing so this um so this is a, a look at building c so medallion court is right here for those of you who are familiar with the neighborhood um the the, the view out, out of the first story window that alderman dowd mentioned is looking out of the, the the storefront window that's adjacent to the stairwell right here so it kind of gives you an idea of of how things are laid out on site this is building b so a lot of buildings b c and d are almost kind of uh, replicas of, of themselves. Um, this is a, a view of the backside of building A. It's kind of the back of house where all the mechanical equipment and boiler room is. That's the, that's the boiler room itself that was uh, finished recently over the last few weeks. So right now, until the springtime, um, our, the site work company has kind of gone away and taken a break. And then once the weather breaks in the spring, they'll come back and Fine tune the grades and start getting ready for all the landscaping and the and the plantings to, to take place uh, later this spring and early summer. Uh, we are still continuing to uh, make progress at the exterior, installing the sunshades and the remaining brick veneer. Um, that has been completed on the building. Uh, there's a couple of outbuildings that are kind of utility sheds that are near the athletic um, fields. Those are being addressed right now. Um, so we'll just continue to pluck away. And make progress um, as we near the uh, the springtime. Moving interior, so I kind of I wanted to show some pictures just to show the how each wing is I guess similar in layout, but but has its unique um, differences in look. So buildings B, C, and D they're all roughly in the same level of um, of completeness. So buildings. Uh, C and B have been punch listed by Harriman, and that pro how that process works is Jamie gives us the list of of items that need to be addressed or corrected, um, cut you know touch up paint, etc. Um, and then we issue that our, that list to our subcontractors, and then we review back with Harriman to ensure that ensure that they were closed, and that's part of the you know the quality control process in construction. So, uh, building C has been closed out. Building B, we, we are addressing with our subcontractors, subcontractors right now. And Jamie and his team are going to be punch listing, I believe, next week or the week after in Building D. And then uh, Building A, I'll show some photos. Um, that's kind of the Unified Arts Administration offices, gymnasium, cafeteria, kitchen. So that, that's a, a little more involved. So that'll be taking place later this spring. Um, so Building D, 
um, we're going to pour final cleaning over the next two weeks or so. And then um, kind of wrapping things up within those. Those are pretty close to be, uh, being complete. So in this school, all entrance to the school is in section A. And if any issue comes up where someone's trying to eat in the school that shouldn't be in the school, these three areas of the school can be totally isolated and locked out so somebody couldn't get into those areas. <laughs> Too much detail in the security aspects of the school for that later. So I mentioned uh, building A, so that Alderman Dow had mentioned or showed this photo in the previous uh, presentation to kind of get you uh, up to speed here. So this view is from the top of the monumental stair in the cafeteria. So you have the cafeteria here. Um, we got the, the performance stage over here, and then uh, the kitchen. There's actually roll down shutters that have custom graphics painted on them. They're actually, uh, very nice. Um, we got wood slat walls are complete. The wood slat ceilings are complete. Uh, we're, we've got a lot of wood wall paneling being installed right now. Uh, so various stages of finishes going on in area a we've got wall tile uh, this is the uh, this wall tile is actually down this corridor over here so that the cafeteria area is kind of taking shape right now um, the gymnasium and locker room areas the locker room uh, all the bathroom fixtures we're in uh, right now all the flooring is has been completed um, i believe the locker bench is going to be installed over the next week or two uh, the lockers are installed um, gymnasium, we have the wood flooring was loaded into the gym two weeks ago. It has to acclimate, so I think we got another week or two, and then the wood floor install will start to take place over the next week or so. So it's my intent that uh, somewhere between mid to end of February uh, to have the Board of Education, the Board of Aldermen, do another tour so you can see this stuff up close and personal, and a lot of it should be much <clears throat> further along. Yeah, and to, just to give you a, a, a point of, um, there was a um, an equity focus for all of these schools. So basically every school, whether it was a renovation or an addition, received a, a gymnasium tune-up or, an, a, in this case, a, an entirely new gym. Each gym had um, telescoping bleachers, a divider curtain, all new backboards, back, uh, backstops, wall pads. So it was everything, everything got refreshed um, e in e equal fashion at each job site. And then moving, um, moving into the kitchen, all the ki uh, kitchen equipment is coming in two weeks over there as well. So we'll be kind of flushing that out over the next month or so. So some of the changes that are going into the kitchen are being picked up in cost by the food administration and not part of this project but we are accommodating that work to put the new equipment in. That they, It's not major, but it has been addressed, but it's being paid for separately. So big picture looking, we got a, a busy uh, next three months here. So essentially by the end of April, <clears throat> we're, we're shooting to have final uh, temporary um, occupancy for Mr. Smith and his team and the district to start moving in because it's, you know, even though that the building is complete, we still got to give district enough time to get in and, and get comfortable with the space and get everything up and running for school in September. So um, we got fire alarm inspections ongoing over the next two months. Uh, we've been reviewing monthly with the National Fire Marshal and the building department. So we've been keeping in check with them. So over the, uh, over the months of March and April, we'll be going for all of our final inspections on all of the buildings. Just a quick question about the aesthetics, because I'm not sure what's complete and what's not. It looks like the front building design is pretty intentional, but the back is different. Is it that's supposed to look like the universal camouflage pattern for some reason, or <laughs> is that just work in progress? So what you're seeing in the front of the school right here, this is actually one of the classroom wings. That is a uh, concrete tactical, uh, excuse me, concrete uh, panel called tactile, um, and it is arranged in that assortment for architectural aesthetics. In the back, what you're seeing is also some, the gray portion is also some of that concrete paneling. Um, it's a um, more of a matte finish, and then the, the brick or brick masonry in the red uh, off to the sides. People miss the sunshade. 
Thanks for clarifying. Again, we're shooting to have the temporary occupancy for from the building department end of April, and then shooting for the furniture vendors to start staging uh, in phases, bringing the, all the, the new furniture into the building. So we've been working closely with the superintendent, um, Alderman Dowd, and Mr. Smith's team to make sure that everything's ready for move-in. Any questions on McCarthy? He, he had to run fiber optic from Nashua High South to the school done now. A lot more in the IT area, but we won't get into that. Hello, everybody. Uh, Brendan Orell, Harvey Construction, Assistant Project Manager. Uh, I've been working with Ken for quite a while now. I uh, worked on the Fairgrounds Middle School, Penichuk, uh, McCarthy with him as well. Um, and now I'm sort of working on my own on some of these other projects with Ken uh, helping me behind the scenes as well. Um, so given an update here on uh, the Penichuk Middle School dehumidification project. Um, so as we got further along in all of the uh, middle school projects, and we had already completed all of the additions here at Penichuk Middle School, as well as the uh, renovations, um, with the budget in good standing, uh, this committee approved to move forward with the installation of a dehumidification system into uh, several portions of this building. Um, we had originally intended to do this right along, but correct. we wanted to wait and have McCarthy School go along further so that we made sure we were had the funds to do this work and we do yes yes At that point we had already completed fairgrounds completed this project and got very far along in the mccarthy middle school to alderman's point um so to start this project off um we initially sit down with the principal uh, faculty staff and administration um, and review a phasing plan to give them an outline of which classrooms we would like to uh, start working in um, the benefit that we have here is uh, we do have two wings that are very subtly occupied at this point. Um, so starting in April of uh, 2024, uh, we will be entering the South Edition, uh, which Ken has highlighted in red up in the corner. Um, and the intention of this project is to provide dehumidification. And what that does is we're installing a series of um, mechanical cassette units that are mounted in the ceiling, and a lot of mechanical infrastructure will go in place. Um, so not a lot of interesting stuff to show, um, but a lot of hard work behind the scenes. Uh, Jamie's team is working uh, with myself, and Ken, uh, to process all the submittal and design documents, get all the materials released. Um, we have gotten the building permit secured and going through all of our um, permitting processes and procedures to ensure that we are in place to uh, hit the ground and get boots on the floor in April. Also noticed this school is entirely areas here. Whole electricity is furnished with those solar. Jumping into uh, Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable, uh, so much much different than uh, the McCarthy Middle School being a brand new building brand new construction. Um, here at the Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable schools, these are you know, fully occupied facilities, uh, students, faculty, and staff inside of them. Um, so what we did at the start of these projects was uh, install a series of um, temporary portable classrooms at the exterior of the building. And we also created a series of uh, temporary classrooms within the gymnasium. Um, so showing a quick update on some of the final touches for our first phase of construction. Um, we had gone through both the cafeteria as well as installing all of the temporary classroom locations. Um, and so we dropped back over the Christmas break portion and finished up a couple final details in there. Um, so just some marker boards, tack boards, um, installing some heating elements on the wall to keep the kids nice and warm, um, and just finishing up some final uh, toilet rooms and, and getting those items completed and turned over to the school for use. Um, the first large phase of construction that we moved into was uh, phase number two, um, which over at Birch Hill is fourth grade and kindergarten, and it made Dunstable third grade and kindergarten. Um, so what we do is we end up putting a set of uh, temporary walls to isolate our construction zone from the students. 
um, and we create a temporary construction zone. We review it with the fire marshal to ensure that everything is in check um, and that the faculty, staff, and administration have everything they need in the spaces that they are occupying. Um, then we move into the phase of construction, which as you're seeing here is sort of the finishes phase. Um, and this phase is tracking for turnover at the end of February, um, the week of February 26th, February break is when the uh, students, faculty, and staff will be able to begin occupying this space. Um, so immediately after the February break vacation, students will be in these classrooms and they will be in full use. So, so also a number of things have been done in this project to make sure the school is, is environmentally sound, LED lights, more insulation. Can't do the solar on the roof. Uh, well, it's still being debated about part of the roof, but there are land areas significant at both of these schools to do solar on the ground if the environmental people in the city want to do that. But still, and that's a public private partnership like the solar panels on both of the schools I pointed out before. The city didn't pay a dime for those. Uh, we, we have a public private partnership with the Revision Energy. And they provide the costs and maintenance for all of those systems, and we share success. And to that point, um, these buildings are also receiving all new HVAC systems um, and EEI. And uh, Matt Smith, he is actually <laughs> just stepping in the room. Um, Good timing. <laughs> so that is perfect. Matt, do you want to take your slide? I can, yeah. <laughs> I'm Matt Smith with EEI. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little personal emergency, but we're good now. Um, so I don't know what they touched on. Obviously, I just walked in the room, but uh, we've had a couple good weeks. Uh, inspection with the fire department at both schools went well. Um, we've got the air handler units both started up, and we are now in the commissioning phase, uh, getting the kinks worked out of that. We've got Lighting is now complete and lights are programmed and final devices are going on the wall, just a few odds and ends. Uh, inspections are scheduled for next week and then for electrical and final mechanical is scheduled for next week also. Uh, so a, a lot of movement over the last month and uh, coming to the end. And uh, you know, the testing and, and commissioning is the big thing right now. And, getting those air handlers up and running for, for the space to be turned over. Questions for EEI? Well. Oh, yes, Sean? Just for the new members, um, there's really two contractors on this job. So you have uh, EEI, <coughs> who does all the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing work. Electrical also includes fire alarm systems, PA, all that stuff. Low voltage <coughs> systems as well. Then Harvey does all the rest. Walls up, floors, and so that's why we have two different ports. Thank you. <laughs> Very energy efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect time. Um, so one final slide to run here, through here. Um, so the area in blue is the area that we've been working in over the past few months. Uh, very similar zone at both schools. Uh, the school footprints are actually identical, just flipped. Um, so this phase has spanned from uh, June 2023 through February 2024. Um, as I stated, so the last few weeks um, in the upper floor of Birch Hill, we actually, all the floors are completely waxed. The doors have been closed and, and doors are locked down. So the spaces are not being touched until the teachers move in. Um, as Matt touched upon, the inspections have gone very well. And we have our final inspections lined up for uh, the 2nd of February. Um, so following the 2nd of February, our temporary walls will come down um, and the space will open up. Um, and then we will transition over February break to the red area. And that phase will span from February through August. Um, so you'll have a lot of different pictures in the uh, coming meeting showing a, a lot of demolition and uh, removal of some of the existing. Um, so a lot of things forthcoming. Um, and that's pretty much it for Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable. Any 
Any, Any questions? questions on nothing for any of the things Harvey covered? Get more and more as we go along. Okay. So, middle school moving, Sean. Um, did you want to cover the? PCO, PCCO, or oh, yes. Franklin Street. Buried in the middle of that agenda. No pictures anymore. So we finished doing the construction at Franklin Street uh, for the school year. Wrapped up all our punch lists and loose ends in the fall and just finally got all the billing reconciled and I didn't quite make it for the December meeting. So here we are in January. Uh, we are happy to be able to return in the form of this PCCO $235,066.30. Uh, from the project but construction budget that we had. So as a subset to Sean's and the school district budget for that school, we came in under by $235,066.10. This PCCO number 11, if approved, makes my contract for the construction match. So we can close this out. And that money that's coming back, I talked to John Griffin and uh, Going to be some extra costs on the security vestibule project. Probably will do the board of aldermen moving this money to that project. Get any questions on PCCO number eleven for Frank? Not. I have a motion to accept PCCO number eleven for Frank Street. So moved. Sorry. Moved by Alderman Sullivan. Okay. Any discussion? See none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Sean. Okay, moving services. So as we prepare to close down the Elm Street Middle School and move the staff to Carthy Middle School, potentially Penichuk Middle School. That's still to be determined. Um, we have to move everything out of, just all the teaching materials out of Elm Street. All brand new furniture for the new middle school. Penichuk already got all their brand new furnitures. Just mostly moving books and papers and files and Moving band instruments, basketballs, volleyballs, uh, anything that's not furniture. So we put out an RFP on uh, the street to request for proposal that was done in December. And I received, uh, there were two amendments to clarify our specification. Went out, received uh, bids from five companies. One was deemed, I talked to various financial people, one was deemed not uh, acceptable, have all the information requested. The other four had all the information. All five firms were very good firms. I, I was really gratified at the response. Did pretty well there. They're all qualified. So if they're all qualified, then you look at the price. Lowest uh, qualified bid was College Pound Movers. Their estimate to do the work is $25,000. So recommend we accept their proposal in that amount. I, I did speak with them, uh, make sure they had everything covered. Came away uh, convinced they do. There may be some additional things. We haven't totally tied down everything that's moving, but if we have to hire riggers to move heavy pieces of equipment for some reason, that's an, that'll be an addition. It's relatively small money. I'll need a motion to award the contract for the middle school moving project to College Bound for an amount of $25,000. Moved by Alderman Wilshire. Any questions? Being none, all in favor, 
Oh, yes. I have a question about when, when will this Because um, you've got teaching materials and you've got teachers using teaching materials. Yes, and, you yes. know, I'm just wondering how this is evolved. We actually met in the superintendent's office earlier this week. I'll kick it off because we've been talking about it before, but kind of look for whatever other loose ends we have. Basically, we're looking to get the books, or boxes to all the teaching staff during February or April break. We come back from the along with tape, tape, bubble wrap. Then the actual moving will not be till after school gets out again. The uh, principal from Elm Street and vice principals have been doing tours of the new school. Stay well ahead of this. Yeah. Any other questions? I think there was one in the audience. Normally we don't. If you'd like to come down, you have to go to a microphone. Name and address. Uh, my name is Calvin Highfield. Uh, my name is Calvin Highfield. I'm one of the companies that uh, submitted a bid. And I just wanted to go through the bids because I'm looking at it and College Brown has the lowest unit, not the lowest, not to exceed estimate, but they have the highest hourly rates. And I'd ask the question is how many colleges, how many schools have they done? Ask them. Don, you want to? Yes, they've worked. Um... I, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, the city of Manchester uses them for a lot of schools. I have a list of schools in their proposal that's where they work. Really, uh, time and material? Really, a time and material quote? So, what I did, so Amendment 2 to the contract was. Um, we gave everybody a tour of the facility, so they all got a chance to see the library, all the classrooms, all the main spaces. And uh, during that, some of them during that walk said we kind of need to make sure it's apples for apples, because they can all have different impressions of how many boxes they need, for example. Um, so I said, I told them in the amendment, assume there's 20 boxes per classroom. There's 80 some odd class, I think that 87 classrooms. I said, assume there's 10 boxes for offices and there's X number of offices. Um, and then I said, to add extra boxes just in case for something we haven't covered. Um, so that was an attempt, and I think it was a pretty good attempt to do apples for apples. Um, for your, your comment on the salaries, um, I wouldn't say they were the highest in every case. So we'd have one that was higher. Um, but he, he was the one that was eliminated, correct? So, well, set is we yeah, have other I'm stuff. Fine with that. All right. I just I just feel I'd like to put it on record that we've probably done close to 200 schools in the last 20 years, and if you go look at that price, you'll never set it. You had prices of 55, 42, 50. So I think there's a huge discrepancy. Hold on. But they will have to do it for that price. So. Huh? They will have to do it for that price. Yeah. If, yeah. All, right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. John? Invoice time. Uh, so I, the new members, I read out all the invoices, all the amounts. We total them at the end, and then you, when Dow takes uh, motions to approve it. So for e and &E, the security for, firm, we had uh, four invoices to work at Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable, totaling $7,346.57. For 
energy efficient. Uh, we had uh, two invoices for work at Birchill and Bain Dunstable, totaling <laughs> one million two hundred seventeen thousand fifty five dollars and sixty eight cents. For Harriman, our architect, uh, for work at Birchill, Main Dunstable, and McCarthy Middle School, um, three invoices totaling thirty thousand nine hundred sixteen dollars and forty one cents. For Harvey Construction. Four invoices for the work at Franklin Street, McCarthy, Birchill, May Dunstable, totaling $1,861,064.32. One invoice from Hayner Swanson for work at McCarthy Middle School for $1,258.37. We had uh, six invoices from John Turner Consulting. They are our testing agent um, for work at Birchill and Carthy Middle School, totaling $14,707. For Page Street Leasing, um, we lease our ground storage units from them. Two invoices, one for Birch Hill, one for Main Festival, <coughs> totaling $200. From Pro AV, um, provided the flat panels uh, for Franklin Street, that was uh, $6,169. Turner Turner Building Science, our commissioning agent, the new people in board, the commissioning agent takes a look at the original design and then takes a look at the actually installed, set the controls and make sure everything is what it was intended to be. Um, kind of gives us a insurance policy that was uh, everything was done correctly, even though we totally trust the construction. Um, so one invoice for work at Birch Hill and Main Dunstable, five thousand four hundred twenty dollars. RPF Environmental, uh, they. They oversee the uh, asbestos abatement in schools. Uh, invoices for Birch Hill, Maine Dunstable, totaling $25,775. And two invoices from Vanessa Associates. They are a traffic consultant, um, both for work at Penichak, uh, $3,887.44. By the school project, uh, Franklin Street, $25,602.50. Middle school, one million three hundred twenty-three thousand six hundred forty-seven dollars and fourteen cents for Birch Hill and May Dunstable, one million eight hundred twenty-four thousand five hundred and fifty dollars and forty-five cents. And for the security vestibule, we didn't have any expenses this month. Those all totaled three million one hundred seventy-three thousand seven hundred ninety-nine dollars and seventy-nine cents. So I'll need a motion to approve the invoices for Franklin Street. Of twenty five thousand six hundred two dollars and twenty cents, the middle school project invoices one million three hundred twenty three thousand six hundred forty seven dollars and fourteen cents, Birch Hill, Maine Dunstable one million eight hundred twenty four thousand five hundred fifty dollars and forty five cents, Security Vestibule zero, total invoices to be approved this evening three million one hundred seventy three thousand seven hundred ninety nine dollars and seventy nine cents. Does anyone have any questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Point of order, did you need the motion or was that? I had the motion. Okay. I thought you had said you needed it. No. <laughs> all right. So. No one made the motion? Done it. All right, let's do this again. Make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd like to make the motion? I'll I'd like to make a motion to approve the invoices as read. Okay. Yes. So the motion now on the floor is to approve the invoices as I have read them in the three million one hundred seventy-three thousand seven hundred ninety-nine dollars seventy-nine cents. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We don't need a non-public. Do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. He does that all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're adjourned at 8.02. Thanks, Rick.